Hey YouTube, um, this is John Tech Lock, and I haven't really been active in this YouTube channel that I've had for a while now, but I've been really busy. But today, I'm going to show you Windows 8 Consumer Edition, which I just installed on my Mac through Parallels. So I have it here right now. Um, installing it was really easy, actually. Let me just... Let's see, let me show you how I did that. Well, I went to the website and got the ISO. So, it was in, I, I saved it in here. As, uh, right there. So, that's what it was. Windows 8 Consumer Preview 32-bit English uh, Edition. I was going to get the 64-bit one, but what happened was it was taking way too long to download, and I felt like I really just want to see what it looks like. I really don't care about uh, the speed at this point. The capacity at this point so I got the 32-bit um, and I installed it through parallels and it looks incredible all right so let me just go through all the differences I see this entire this entire screen has been revolutionized it looks like the Xbox 360 stuff I mean if I look in here how do I even compare this to uh, previous version of Windows. Now, this is how it's going to look like. This is your start menu, pretty much. Okay? It has the store, the maps, all this stuff. It has full screen internet browsing. We've got a calendar. we got all these apps, alright? So they call them apps too, just like they do in Apple. So Microsoft created all these apps, connected through your email address, which could be an MSN account. I think they rec I think it's actually required that it's an MSN account. And you can you use that account in order to access the apps. However, if you click desktop, it looks just like Windows 7 minus the start button. But you move your mouse to the edge of the screen and you get that start thing back. Um so this whole thing looks the same as Windows 7, right? I mean, We've got the same snap features, we can do all that stuff, and um, yeah, that's all cool. But something new and different is this entire new ribbon thing that they've had with uh, Microsoft Office. They've incorporated that with Windows Explorer entirely. So we no longer have those drop-down menus, we have this. Um, and I mean, it's interesting. I don't know if this will work in, in work environments, you know? It's great for home use for just entertainment purposes, but when it really gets down to it, how useful will this be, you know? Um, well, that was just one critique I had of this. But everything else looks pretty much the same, right? I mean, if I want to create a new folder, I just hit that. If I want to, I can share things easier. Uh, I don't have to go right-click properties and stuff, although that option is also still there uh, with the sharing. Um... So that's pretty much the interface right there. The interesting part is, if I go here, we get this huge sidebar, search for internet, sharing for file uh, networking, the start, which brings me back to the original thing that I've shown you, devices, which show uh, external things that are connected, and settings, which give you pretty much access to the control panel, personal personalization, your PC information, all that stuff, okay? Um, if you go to more PC settings, you can alter things uh, exactly the way you want it uh, through all this stuff. To get back, it took me a while to figure out. I just had to hit that part, which is another thing I want to show you. If I go here and I just quickly move my uh, mouse pointer up, it shows me everything that's open. <coughs> Excuse me. So right now I have PC settings opened. Uh, if I go back to the start... Um, I can go back to desktop, go and do this thing, and I can close it by right-clicking it. So, I mean, it it's different. I don't know if I really like it. It's really, it's really different, is what I'm trying to say. Um, if I hit Internet Explorer, I mean, it looks pretty much the same. I guess they cleaned it up a bit. Uh, if I hit the menu bar, that stuff shows up. I mean, everything else is pretty similar. Um, two previous copies. Oh, what I do like is Task Manager. 
um, what ha this is what it will look like normally. All right, it'll just show you like really basic uh, things that are up and running. Like I have uh, mail running, my like my mail client, my mail app. I guess is what they're saying. Yeah, this thing right there. Um, let's say I open up Internet Explorer. So you'll see Internet Explorer right there. Um, so that's interesting. But if you hit more details, you get a really nice looking task manager right here. Uh, you see your background processes. You see, uh, yeah, like as you can see, I, I mean, everything like Windows 7 is still there, you know. But anyway, yeah, so you see your background processes, window processes. If you go to performance, they've really revolutionized and changed the entire uh, aesthetics of how it would look like. We got the memory, disk, and ethernet um, organized through graphs of different colors. So that's really nice. You got your app history of everything that you've, uh, that you've been using. And that's really helpful, I guess. I mean, if you're a parent, that might come in handy. You got your startup items, if you have any. Uh, the users who are using this. Details, which pretty much uh, processes that are running, I guess, in a way, uh, and services. So, I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. Now, you're probably wondering, how do I even turn off this shit? Well, I can go off here. I can go to the, you know, the start, whatever the hell this is, start flow. I don't know what to call it. I can go and click this and then just hit, uh, I guess, sign out it'll sign out into this thing and if I click it I can go here and hit shut down and restart what was my password all right so yeah as you can see it was really fast I mean it's pretty fast it's amazing um, if I go back here I think if I go to settings I can go to power and I can change I can choose which one I want to hit um, so the idea of hibernate I guess hasn't really caught on much now, I want to go individually into everything that they have. If I go to the store, it's the App Store. It's pretty much Microsoft's App Store, the App Marketplace, whatever they call it. Right? So you have the spotlight. All right? You can click things that you want. Let's say you want to hit USA Today. So it gives you overview, details, and reviews, everything. You can hit install, and uh, I guess it'll install it. And it has a really cool new way of installing things. It just comes up in four little dots and goes across the damn um, screen. I mean, that's pretty interesting. And you got this huge bar right here to uh, browse through the different categories. Or you can just use your scroll button, as you can see I'm doing right now. I think what they're trying to do is make it easier for tablets. and Because, uh, I mean, the entire thing would look really nice if you were uh, just using your fingers to swipe through, through move, and, uh, through move this entire screen. And that'd be really nice, um, clicking it and stuff. I mean, I think the entire idea is to make it touch-friendly. So, I mean, that's the store. Maps. Um, yeah, I mean, it's pretty much Google Maps, you know? I mean, this is pretty much what it is. It's interesting, I guess. Oh, that's cool. There's a town called Liberal in... Where is that? Freaking Kansas or something. That's interesting. Well, if I hit people, it's just a search. The music thing is pretty nice. Um, I mean, it looks pretty cool. I mean, this has potential for for growth. The entire thing is different. Like, if I, I can browse through certain things, I can hit albums and it comes up. If I hit that, I guess if, if it was an option for me to hit, I could hit it and it'll come and play. I mean, that's pretty interesting. And it comes with some games. Not so fun. Finance. It's really cool. I mean, just look at that. That's interesting right there. I can individually uh, watch the investments grow or diminish. I mean, look at all that. That's really nice to have. Can you imagine if um, Windows 8 came into your tablet PC, came into touchscreen monitors all over your house, and you have these things wherever you wanted. You have the news where you want it to be. You can just browse through, and that'd be really cool. So I think they've really revolutionized um, flexibility with an operating system. 
the fact that I can still use Windows right here. Um, and also the fact that I can go in and just, if I had like a tablet PC, I can just go through and click whatever the hell I wanted. So that's really nice to have. Oh yeah, here's the Internet Explorer uh, full browsing. Uh, what happens is if I want to go to another website, it's really difficult, actually. There we go, you got to right click. Isn't that interesting? So if I right click, I have the different tabs or windows open, right? So these are my tabs. And I can click that, and go down here I can type in where I want to go. And so it comes up like that. I mean, that's pretty nice. So again, if we had like Windows 8 TV, this would be pretty cool to use. Uh, another thing, if I right click right here, I have everything that I'm using at that moment. Uh, if I hit apps, these are the things that I have installed. So you're probably asking, how do you access like the programs that you're installing? Well, if you install a program, it'll come up as a square right there. Okay, if you right click and hit all apps, it'll come up within a category. Okay, so I mean, if you can see everything that they have, they still have Windows Easy Transfer, they've still got Paint, and they still have um, everything else that you would think Windows would have, you know. Um, oh, here's another thing right clicking at the edge comes up with everything systems uh, disk management I mean it's the same shit as Windows 7 Windows uh, Vista prior versions of Windows okay um, so what I do wish to see Microsoft is I want a button okay I want a freaking start menu button right there and maybe it doesn't have to be a button but I just I miss the button I miss the menu I like the menu I mean this is pretty cool all right I can have this on top of what I previously had just bring back the button it has everything else just either bring back the button or just freaking remove the damn taskbar just move, remove the whole thing so we're only dependent on this but the fact that you still have this, it just looks naked. It just looks like something's missing. Because there is something missing. So, I mean, I would like that back. Other than that, Windows 8, I mean, it's pretty nice. I mean, let's look at it. Um, other than this freaking betta fish wallpaper, I mean, it's still pretty nice. This whole thing has changed into a different interface. Um, it's very friendly. I can see people use this actually. I can see people be totally dependent on the apps and not even go to desktop. Because let's face it, many users don't ever use individualized programs. And if they do, well they can just access it through an app. Um, it's just, I can see people use this. I can see where Microsoft was going with this. and. People ask me, uh, what, what do you think about the competition between Microsoft, Windows 8, and then Mac, and Lion, and all that stuff? Well, it's not really evening the playing field, but it's, it's giving people something to think about. I mean, it's definitely making it easier for people who are more aesthetically appealed towards something. If they're not looking at the fact that on a Windows there are many programs that can be installed, but they buy a Mac because it just looks nice. Well, Windows 8 is looking nice. The entire interface looks nice. And for those who are like me, who just want this, well, that's still there, except I want that freaking menu button. But other than that, I mean, everything is pretty spot on. Uh, they did a great job with the engineering of this. And um, the fact that I can install it on a Mac and the fact that it was so easy just shows how uh, Windows is becoming a different operating system. Um, so yeah, that's about it. And that's all I have to say. Thanks for watching the video. I'll put the uh, installation URLs of the ISOs, uh, the download links of the ISOs. I guess I can link you to an installation video if I can find one on YouTube. I'm sure there are a ton.
Anyway, thanks for watching. Please subscribe.